Hi guys, it's Ali here from Agnes Ruby Studio and I've got another little tutorial for you. But before I do that, I just wanted to say thank you so much for all of my new subscribers. I'm just really blown away by um, how many have subscribed and liked and comment, commented. It just gives me so much encouragement and um, yeah, I just really like to thank you for that because I've really wanted to give this YouTube thing a try for quite a long time and I'm finally doing it and just to know that somebody's getting something out of the videos just means a lot and um, I love all those comments so yeah thank you so much anyway let's get on with it so this is about how to get rid of shiny pages you know those glossy magazines or glossy book pages or um, you might get junk mail in the, in the mail and it's got that sheen to it. Now there's nothing wrong with that. If you like that, that's fine. But sometimes you want to get the more um, matte look or just distress it a little bit or make it look a little bit older or more vintage. But yeah, so this is also using the backs of your napkins. Um, so there's three different ways I'm going to show you to get rid of your gloss off your, off your book pages. And one of them is using the napkins, one of them is using um, chul, and the other one is simply how I like to um, use matte medium or Mod Podge to seal the pages and um, mat, it, mat it down. Um, it's just an easy way to get rid of it. Have, um, that seal without the brush strokes. Yeah, so I'll show you that at the end, but first of all, we'll make some of these. So these are covered, the book page has been covered in a layer of napkin, but it's the backing, the part that we sometimes throw away. But I would like to keep them because I know they're good for lots and lots of things. So um, I'll show you how I did that. First of all, you take your book page, and I've got this floral one, it's actually the same as the one I've used for that tag. And then you take your Mod Podge, you could use um, a matte medium of any kind, uh, but I do find Mod, uh, Mod Podge gives quite a good texture when you're doing um, decoupage with napkins, so I stick to that. Now I'm hopeless with my brushes guys, so um, I buy super cheap packs of brushes, just in case I wreck them. I am better with them now, but I buy super cheap um, packs of brushes at Kmart, and they just do so well because they've got a, a plastic um, handle. I do have some wooden ones as well, um, but yeah, I'm so bad. That's looking really bad. I'm not even gonna show you that. You put a good amount of Mod Podge, on your page and I think this is pretty much how you would do um, your decoupage with a, with a napkin if you're doing it with Mod Podge and you just put a lot a good amount over the page like so and I'm going to put a tiny bit more because the more the better and I'm going to show you why in a sec. So that's quite a decent amount and you want to work quickly because you don't want to let that go dry. And you take your napkin and you just get it the best as you can because part of the appeal of this is the texture so you don't need to get it super flat but as flat as you can is, is good. So just sort of smooth it out as best you can don't, you know, you've got to be gentle, just like you are with a napkin, um, otherwise you'll rip it. And then you get really good amounts of, of the Mod Podge back again, and you go over it. And you want to get good amounts so that you're not dragging the napkin, so that it doesn't rip. But I'll also show you why you need good amounts on top in a second, because I'll show you one that hasn't worked. So, and then you just sort of gently pat that down 
Now see where the wrinkles are. I could have been a tiny bit better with those and not had so many wrinkles. But to be honest, I like the wrinkles, so that's okay. So just patting, patting, patting at this stage because we're getting a little bit towards the could rip it stage. But lots and lots of glue. If in doubt, pretty much add more glue and you'll be right. So lots and lots, lots and lots, and you'll get to know after you've done it a few times how much glue you'll need. And that's it. You just leave that to dry overnight. You could take out your um, heat tool if you wanted to, but I don't like to really do that. It just causes a lot of fumes for nothing. So I just um, leave that overnight. It, it actually does only take a couple of hours really. So just leave that to dry and then brush in the water till later. And then we're going to leave that to dry. So I'll put that aside. And due to the magic television, I've got one pre-prepared for you. So this is what it looks like once it's dried. And you've got that, it looks like it's a napkin, but it's not a napkin. It's a glossy book page with the backing of a napkin over the top of it. So I'm going to trim that down to a tag size. But I'll just show you when I was practicing this. I did one and I didn't put enough glue here so see what's happened it's um, it's well you can't see the picture basically I could still use that something I guess but to be honest I probably won't um, so here I've put heaps of glue and you can see the image coming through the napkin and over here it's useless because I haven't put enough Mod Podge on the top Okay, so that's what you've got to do. Put lots and lots of Mod Podge on the top. Okay, so then I'm going to just cut that down to a tag size. So what I'm using is um, some book pages. So these aren't very special looking book pages. So I'm just using them as the sandwich layer in between the tag. And I've, I'm lucky enough to have one of the old Tim Holtz big styes with the tag. Um, pre-done um, but this tag book page I've just cut that with my trimmer and actually it's not quite lining up there so I might trim that down a little bit more um, and then I'm going to trim that to the same size too and make you a tag so let me just take that to the trimmer and I'll be back in a sec okay guys I've trimmed that down so I've got my backing that I'm going to use um, so that it can be a journaling tag and I've got my tag and I've got my piece all trimmed down. You could totally use your scissors for that. Um, I just thought I'd use my trimmer. It's a big beastie so I can't bring it to the table. So I just did that off camera. And then I'm just going to trim that down a tiny bit. Well, I'm just going to do the corners actually. I'm going to re-trim that. So I'm just going to line that up. Make that match the backing probably make more sense, wouldn't it? Alright, now with this sort of tag, because I use my sewing machine, I don't need to get it completely perfect like I used to in my old card making days. Um, I just kind of get it close enough and then that's it. So I've got my piece and doesn't that look beautiful? And it's got this lovely texture just like it would if it was a day napkin um, but it's not it's a backing so that's really cool so then I just what I do because I'm sewing it and if you if you're not sewing it because you don't have to because you could just distress the edges with a bit of ink and you'd be fine or not at all it's totally up to you it's it's, it's a personal preference um, you know some people like distressing some people don't there are no rules with junk journaling, so you can just do whatever you want. But with this is what I, I'll just show you what I like to do. Um, I've got a super simple, basic as um, sewing machine. My mother actually gave it to me, so it didn't cost me a thing. But I believe they're only $99 or, or maybe $199 with, um, and they have cashback deals all the time. So 
yeah, look out at your local kind of spotlight store or something for those deals if you don't already have a sewing machine or if you want to just get one for your paper crafting because some people don't, don't like to use the good sewing machines for paper but I don't really sew as in so-so <laughs> I just put paper with fabric mostly um, make a few tote bags sometimes for the local Cambridge um, plastic bag free group and that's about it so anyway what I'm doing here is I'm just um, smoothing it out because you don't want it sort of bub bubbly even though you're not seeing that layer you don't want it bubbly um, so even with a glue stick you can still get sort of bubbly layers if you don't smooth it and of course you could use your credit card but I'm just using my hands at the moment it's totally fine and then I've got my tag it's got a bit of more sturdiness to it and then I haven't got anything else going on there at the moment, so I'm just going to put that on as well with my glue stick, and that's a Yoohoo glue stick. That's my favourite right now. Um, I've just, um, this is nearly at its end, so it's totally dirty, but um, I've just got the Yoohoo um, blue stuff, so you can see the glue as it goes on, so that, that's cool. Yep, so that's just smoothing that down. Smoothie, smoothie. And then I'll put my hole in a bit later on. But until then, I just like to take my distress ink and that's a vintage photo, which is my current favourite. I just kind of switch in between different shades as I feel like it. And now, because this has been Mod Podge, I don't have to worry about... Um, using distress ink or, or permanent um, ink, waterproof ink, because it's kind of permeable now because of the Mod Podge. If you know what I mean, it won't rub off. And then on the back, I like to do the back too because that just gives my sewing layer a little bit more of a frame. Try and speed this up if I can. I'm not sure if I can do that part of the editing yet, but <laughs> I'll give it a go. Um, yeah, so there we have our tag, and then you basically just embellish it how you like. So this one, I have um, used a Graphics Fury. I think that's a freebie, and it, if it is, guys, I'll link that down below. Um, if it, if you on Graphics Fury, just look up French. Um, labels I think they were supposed to be perfume labels or something there was a free tutorial this was years ago this they just happened to be in my stash so I've cut them out and used them um and this yeah and then um so I've got, I've got another one somewhere oh yeah that's a bit small there so I put um some flat back pearl so they've got these little dots where the um little um nails or brads you'd put your brads but on this particular cardstock, um, I have ripped those before, so I decided to just use some flat back pearls. And so what I did, that one, I left that the colour, because I was going to actually put that on that tag, but I decided not to in the end. Um, and that, so those are coloured flat back pearls. And these ones were just white ones. Um, I did leave them out somewhere to show you. Where did they go? Lost them. Typical, isn't it? Always. Oh, here they are. Here they are. Here they are. So these were just cheapy, cheapy flat back pearls from, I think, the warehouse or Spotlight or something. And that I, that they kind of like string together, so I cut, I cut them, so that's why it looks a little bit messy. And then I grab my Sharpie pen. So all I did was take my Sharpie pen, on, because it's a permanent marker, you can write over plastic or anything and it will stay permanent. So I'm just, all I did was that. You leave it to dry, preferably overnight, and then it kind of settles itself. And then if you've missed, uh, so if you've missed, if you've missed a little bit, you can go over it. But that's basically all you do. And then that's a, you can get them in packs of um, 
metallics and this that's the gold metallic it comes in a silver and a bronze as well but I find the gold looks more like the bronze that we all like because that looks more like it's a, a brad a metal brad and then I've cut the glue sort of thing like that and then peeled it off and put it on there so it looks like a brad but it's not it's a flat back pearl and these ones I've done with little diamantes. I don't really tend to put a lot of bling anywhere, so I had a few of these to use up. Um, these days, I don't tend to use those blingy things. Um, so I've put the, those there, and they kind of look more like um, screw ends. So if you can see that. And those ones look like brads, but they're not. And then you can choose, if you want to, to grunge up the middle. So this one I've grunged up a little bit with the distress sink, and this one I've left at the moment. I may grunge it later, I'm not sure. So what you do, obviously, is you just um, take your, your dauber thing, or your, I don't forget what they're called. How is it possible that videoing makes you forget your words? But it does. Um, so then I'll just um, lightly, lightly go over and bring out some of the texture of... See all those wrinkles coming out? If you like that grungy look, that's how you get it. And then you would add your embellishments, maybe a little bit of collage. Um, it's got an eyelet here and then a little bit of matching sari silk or whatever fibers or anything that you have in your stash. And I'll just show you this one guys. This is um, one of the Tim Holtz cabinet cards and I have layered some um, napkin backing on top of that as well and it just took that shine off it and distressed it and grunged it up um, like I like it. Um, they're quite shiny when you get these ones. I'm not sure about the ones you can get now, but I've had these for quite a while and they're quite shiny. And that is so you can do some of his distress techniques, but I just wanted to play around with that technique. Now this one here, second one, is where you've, you, you put the chill across. And I think I saw this idea, Not it wasn't for shiny pages, she was just doing it for um, just to add some texture to an image that she printed off so it wasn't it wasn't glossy um, but I think it, she's called um, Country Cottage Creations and I think I think she's actually from Australia so I will link her um, below where I saw that so I've just slotted in this little piece because I realized that I might not have um, you might not have really realized what the chill was that I'm talking about sometimes my accent might get you a bit confused i'm not too sure let me know in the comments that'd be much appreciated um so this tool is just actually i've used just used a scrap of this beautiful fabric that i've got and it's um a tool like thing with some um, machine embroidery on it and i've just used some scrap that i've um, found that was big enough and it's a fine tool type fabric but you can use the tool that you just buy by the meter um, really cheaply and I think they use that for you know petticoats and children's tutus and things like that um, so it is quite cheap in your fabric stores um, and those ones would be a little bit um, coarser and um, wider weave but if you can see that um, it's quite fine and but still see-through um, and it's kind of a creamy colour, so that was an even better bonus. Um, yeah, so just hopefully you can see what I've used there. Okay. What I've done here is I have taken the chill. Now this is very fine chill, but it would work probably even better with some thicker, like a, a bigger weave chill. Um, so here we go, I've just put it over top of the image and then I'm going to turn that over because I'm going to sandwich it and I'm going to use some Fabri-Tac and I've got that in my sweet Sugar Bell um, bottle and I'm just going to go along the edge to 
two edges at first. Get a decent amount. And then I'm going to stretch it so it's right over as tight as you sort of can. It's making it quite tight. And then I'll cut the edges. In fact, I will cut the edges right up because when I sew it, it's not going to... It's going to catch it all. And then I've got the backing that I've cut to the same size, which is just a piece of craft paper. And I'm going to just use some glue stick down the middle for that because I'm going to sew it. I don't need to worry about the edges. So now I've got that sandwiched in between those two layers on the edge. And then I'm going to sew it. But before that, I, I like to do the edges with my distress, so I'll do that first. I don't want to do the other side, I'm just, just this side. And I'm going to take that to the sewing machine and I'll be right back. So I've taken that to my sewing machine guys and I've just sewed around the edge with a little um, zigzag stitch to get that um, edge going on and it's um, secured the chill down which is really good because I don't need to worry about it falling off and it's a nice journaling spot on the back. Now so just to make it a matching little set here. I've got the same fabric that I've used for the um, frame of my embellishment and I've got the same embellishment and I've used um, a little stamp that I've got. Um, it's an old stamping up stamp so I wouldn't be able to tell you what it is. Um, but any stamp will do. You can use any stamp you've got in your collection, a butterfly or anything. Um, and then I've got, I've doubled that over so it's just tea dyed paper doubled over to make it a little bit sturdy and then I've sewed around the edge, inked around the edge. And I've just got the scrap here of, of fabric that one of my friends gave me from her sewing. And I'm just gonna take my fabric scissors, just cut that to size. Oop. Doesn't work on camera, does it? All right, I'm gonna go cat gander here. Chop that a little bit more. I have wrapped this fabric before and it does work, but um, probably wouldn't get a successful wrap on camera, so I'm not even going to try. So just fray that up a little bit. Take a look and see what it looks like. Whoop! <laughs> Losing the embellishment. All these bits we end up all over the floor. Oh, thank goodness you can't see my floor, guys. It's it's in need of a vacuum, I tell ya. Right, so there we go. I'm just gonna take my fabric glue and glue that down. So all I do is I put my fabric tack here. Big globules. Nobody's gonna see the globules, so I just put on quite a lot because I'm going through the gauze. I wanna get that through the gauze and through the onto the fabric, onto the paper, 
and then on here I'm going to go on the back of my little embellishments. We have a little matching set. You might like to add a button or something, but there you go, and you've got some wiggle room with using that much glue at once. So there you go, you can just shift it around, cut your little strings off, and Bob's your uncle. You've got your little tags out of glossy paper. Nice. One more thing I'm going to show you guys is how to take the gloss off shiny book pages without leaving all the brush brush strokes and this is pretty basic so you might have seen this before but I just felt because I was doing the no shine book page thing that I had to show you the super easiest way as well and this is it so I've got a shiny book page here I get lots of floral sort of junk maily things in the mail and I love to use those um, but they're usually really shiny so how I started doing um, this was well, in the beginning, when I didn't know any better, I just brushed over with um, a matte medium, which ended up being quite grainy. It was the liquid text that I was using, and it wasn't. I didn't really end up using any of the ones that I did. So then I started using my Mod Podge again, and I kind of liked the smoother finish, how it felt, um, but I didn't like my brush strokes. So then I started. I did see someone. You know, sometimes it does take me. A long time to twig to these things but when I do I finally think oh bing and there I go um, so they were doing it with their matte medium or mod podge on a gel plate and I can't link the video because this was ages and ages ago I can't remember who that was um, but I'm a bit precious about my gel plate so I didn't want to do that so I just thought well I'll use the brayer idea but use a mouse pad yeah you can use a mouse pad but I just happen to have this because I used to be a stamping up de demonstrator this is one of their um, stamp pads um, and piercing mats so I've got my piercing marks on the other side um, and there we go so that's sort of like a thick um, what do you call that mm, it's not polystyrene rubbery type thing um, so a, a mouse pad that you use for your computer mouse, um, that would be perfect as well. Anything with some sturdy give, but give to it. So you want to lay that page onto that. And you can do this when you're um, using up your Mod Podge, when you're doing other projects. So if you've got some a little bit of Mod Podge left on your brush, you could use your leftovers on some glossy pages that you have. Um, could be a magazine. Junk, junk, junk mail like I say or something like this so you don't need much you only need about this much just put that on and that is it so literally you could just use that with your leftovers pop that on and then you get your brayer so this is a uh, what is this oh it's a SD brayer but you can use the speedball brayers, any brayers. Um, I've got, it's quite a good sturdy, uh, got a good sturdiness to it, but it has got a bit of give to it, this one, so I quite like it. Um, and then all you do is you brayer that out, and if you've got too much, you can brayer it off. And then just make sure you've covered it all. And then you've got your nice, thin layer of Mod Podge and gone is the gloss in there you go simple and it dries super fast so just a couple of minutes and it's dry and it's not glossy anymore so it's pretty cool now if you've got any questions about any of the other tags we did so we've got the chill ones and we've got the napkin ones if you've got any questions Please leave me a comment. I hope I've explained it well. And yeah, until the next video, guys, take care of you and yours and stay safe, guys. Bye.